calculating earlier, I've been in the, the early years sector for almost 10 years now. So started off um, uh, as part of the cooperative childcare when I was already working for the co-op um, and ended up heading that up and working there for, um, for almost six years and, and subsequently moved across the London Early Years Foundation uh, almost four years ago now. I think they probably split into sort of short, medium and long term. We've, we've learned over the pandemic how flexible and creative early years can be and needs to be. I think what we are seeing is a, is a real sector change and a, and a market realignment. Uh, certainly as, as, as for ourselves in London, we're seeing a fundamental change from the centre of London, which is less busy. There has been a move with Brexit and with the pandemic. Um, out of central London and numbers are, are dropping, but into the more residential areas in outer parts of London, in the suburbs and so on, we're seeing huge demand growth. So I think there's a real realignment, whether that's permanent, we're yet to see. We are seeing some recovery in some of the central nurseries. We have closed some nurseries and reopened some extras and, um, uh, on the outskirts of London. And we're also seeing workplace nurseries still struggling. So. I think some of these things will still play out. I think um, probably flexible working, hybrid working will have a big impact on the sector um, and that will see some changes. But as long as uh, nursery groups or individual nurseries are flexible and react to the market, I think there's, there's some good future. I think we've got to review our portfolio. We've got to make sure that we've got nurseries in the right places. We are an organisation who wants to support all children across London, regardless of their background. But we haven't got a bottomless pool of money. So we have to balance that. So we need some nurseries that are very much surplus providing to enable us to operate in the really deprived areas of London and still offer very good quality with all the rewards that the children and the staff need. So we need to make sure we've got that balanced portfolio with some nurseries providing the surplus to enable us to operate in some more deprived areas. I mean, LEAF operate in London, 76% of our nurseries are in um, deprived or very deprived areas. But you've got to achieve that while still being long-term sustainable. So we've got to get fee levels right so that they're still competitive, but deliver in the right um, areas uh, for us to drive that profitability where we need it so that we can reinvest in, in the other areas. Because what we've seen over the last three years, and we've done analysis of, of nurseries in London, is that the nurseries that are disappearing are in the deprived areas, um, because they are the ones that are dependent purely on government funding, which is, is, is not enough. And unless you can get a balanced private and government supported um, uh, mix of ours, it's not going to be sustainable. So we need a portfolio mix and that means flexibility and there will be some closures um, but there's big opportunities as well and we've seen that with lots of the building that's happening out in the east of London um, and there's growing demand in those areas so flexibility all organizations need to do it I think what the pandemic has done is accelerated some of the tough decisions yeah, I think there's a real window of opportunity I think um, Parents particularly have realised how valuable early years um, education and care is. You can't do a job if you're having to look after your toddler at home. It, it doesn't work. So I think there's a real opportunity with a, a sense of goodwill from parents and, and respect. And actually the status of early years has, has improved. That could be temporary. So we need to take a, an opportunity to to unite the sector, if we can, uh, as a mix of um, funded uh, nurseries, of private chains, of individual standalone nurseries, find what commonalities we have um, and really lobby the early, uh, the early years agenda with the government. Because the simple fact is that, that education is nationally state funded from five, but is very piecemeal below that age and their critical years. And if we can just get everybody to realise that that's an investment for our nation for the future, then there's a real big opportunity. But we've got to start to talk with one voice rather than the disparate voices we've had.